What's up, YouTube? Angler Jackalope here, Rob Ricks. So, <clears throat> I already talked a little bit about um, games uh, that you can fuck around with in a power out situation. So, you know, you might get snowed in, <clears throat> you can't get outside, power might be an issue. It could be any number of things, but uh, having games that you can play with your family to me, it's pretty vital just because it gives people a sense of normalcy. It also gives you a way to pass time. Uh, it also has something keep the kids busy while you might be figuring out solution to bigger problems. Um, nothing worse or aggravating than sitting there trying to deal with a situation and having your kids freaking the fuck out. That is a stress multiplier beyond belief. <clears throat> and we don't need that shit while things are going on because ain't nobody got no time for that shit anyway uh, I found a few more things that I have around the house here to kind of illustrate to you uh, some things to invest in just so you have a little bit of fun stuff uh, sitting around uh, very first one I'm going to talk about <clears throat> is an oldie but a goodie for me is uh, Dungeons and Dragons okay I'm gonna put these down here like this bring the other camera out so Dungeons and Dragons really requires just a couple of things. Uh, a player's handbook and a dungeon master's guide. So the player's handbook is what the players will look through and get some familiarity with uh, character class types, races, things of that nature. And these are basically the rules that the players need to be familiar with for the type of character that they want to play. And if you guys are thinking, wow, you know, that's that's just, that's a lot, you know, that's a lot for a player, um, then obviously you haven't played things like uh, uh, World of Warcraft uh, or any of these other online RPGs where you, when you are being competitive, you're doing so much research that you learn how to maximize and tweak your character out. You know, those things owe a huge debt to Dungeons & Dragons. Dungeons & Dragons is the the originator of the role-playing game. Dungeon Master's Guide, this is for whoever is going to play a DM. Uh, this has the rules for things like, okay, you have a certain type of strength, how much can you carry, uh, you know, what kind of feats can you do, uh, what happens if there's some kind of a, a controversy between two characters or a character and a non-playing character or something. Uh, in the Dungeon Master Guide, there's usually some information in there that will answer those types of questions to keep the game kind of rolling along. And, you know, it's, you just need a, a piece of paper, a pencil, pen, something to write with, and then, of course, you need some dice. And I usually have a bunch of fucking dice here, and I don't know where all my, oh, here they go. Here's some dice right here. So, you know, <clears throat> I don't have all the different dice, but you need a, a, a 20, I'll just put shit, I can do these edits. You need a 20 sided, you need a 10 sided, 8 sided, 6 sided, 4 sided, uh, and uh, 10 sided, uh, you could even have like 100 sided dice, uh, you know, if you want to do that. There's a lot of different ones. And so the cool thing about the dice is when you get them, you know, you can collect them and uh, there you can have like, you know, a whole blue set as an example. Uh, and you say, oh, okay, the blue set, that belongs to Rob, and then the black set belongs to Irene, and, you know, whatever. And sometimes the dice come, you know, really neat uh, effects to them. They might be somewhat translucent, you know, have some special colorization, color, colorization to them, things of that nature. And, you know, it's, it, I guarantee you, if you have some experience with this, and you play with your kids, and you get it going... Uh, this is a huge, huge time sink. This is, you, there's no end to the levels of campaigns and stuff that you can be doing with your kids. Uh, I'm telling you that right now. I remember as a uh, teenager uh, growing up in Hawaii, I played with a good friend of mine named Mark, and we had a good, uh, a good group of people playing. We would start on a Friday, and sometimes we would play all the way till Sunday morning. Uh, it was that epic. We looked forward to them. We would have pizza. We'd have uh, a bunch of uh, snacks, things of that nature, a bunch of soda, a bunch of just whatever. Just, just, and we just didn't want it to stop. It was so much fucking fun. And, you know, if you're familiar with online role-playing games like uh, um, 
World of Warcraft, Guild Wars, um, et cetera, et cetera, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about because even on the online arena, it's the same thing. You get playing, you don't really want to stop. Now, you know, to buy the Dungeons and Dragons uh, Player's Handbook and the, um, the DM Guide, uh, you are going to invest about a hundred bucks because retail for this is forty nine ninety five for the player's handbook and forty nine ninety five for the DM's guide. And if you're in Canada, you're going to pay even more because they have it listed here at like I think like eleven dollars more. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, you know that that seems really fucking expensive. Uh, I wish there was something that kind of had the same amount of information, something that could be done in a similar fashion that is about half that cost. Well, there is a thing. There's a, a thing called Pathfinder. Uh, I went to a local shop. Well, not local. I went, when I was over in Idaho, I had stopped by uh, Steve's Card Shock. Uh, Card Shark. Steve's Card Shack and uh, was able to pick this up for 30 bucks. Retail on this is $49.99, but this everything inside of one volume you've got the player and game master rules in a single volume which is really really nice um and this you know you know it's the quality on this is just as good uh the rules are a little bit different um a different environment but you know it's still it's still something that can occupy your time indefinitely so those are the two uh, role-playing things that I recommend. Now, <clears throat> if you happen to be more into cyberpunk, uh, things of that nature, there's a game called Shadow... Oh, fuck me. Uh, Shadow something. It's not Shadow. Uh, what is it? It's this, right? Oh, Net... Anyway, I'm not going to try to rack my brains. This is it right here, and here's the book. I don't, I don't have the game, uh, but I've, I've heard. No, this way. No, this way. There it goes. Right over here. Yeah. Um, I played the online version of it, and it was pretty fucking fun. And so I can imagine this would be pretty neat too. It, it has more to deal with. It has magic in it, but it also has technology and some other stuff. And that is pretty slick. Shadow Runner. Maybe that's the name of it. Anyway, it. Uh, it's been around for a long fucking time, and it's got it's got a lot of interesting stuff to it as well. So there's three different role playing games that you can take in in uh, and think about, and there's other stuff that's out there too. I mean, um, there there's some that are a little more niche, and there's some that, uh, um, you know, like there's a, a Marvel a Marvel role playing game, a DC role playing game. Uh, you know, bottom line is something that you can create a character. You have somebody who is kind of the game t uh, storyteller, the game master, uh, who is basically, you know, setting the narration, setting the, the, the different variables, the tasks, the things of that nature. And then you guys just have a ball with it and you have a lot of fun. Uh, so I highly recommend you do something like that, um, especially if you're anticipating any kind of a grid down situation. Because, you know, board games, they're fun, uh, but they can get repetitive pretty quick. Uh, Role-playing games, they don't get repetitive because you have a real person who's using their creativity to create scenarios and your players have to figure out and solve those types of uh, puzzles and things of that nature. So you can have it as casual as you want or you could have it as lore-driven, you know, technical. It's like, okay, here's the ruler. This is how far your characters can move. Oh, that character is encumbered. He doesn't, he can't move as far, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so it's really up to you and your master, your dungeon master, <clears throat> how, uh, what kind of gameplay you're going to end up having. So that's it for now. I just wanted to add that to uh, the game series uh, just because I think it's important. And um, these are things that I, I personally own and I know and I can attest that they are solid, especially the Dungeons and Dragons. Um, like I said, I've played that ever since high school. I haven't been playing on a regular basis, but um, over the last maybe 20 years, I've played probably uh, I have played probably a good couple of couple of weeks worth of, of sessions, and um, and they've all been epic and fun. So that's it for now. If you like it, like it. Please subscribe. Tell all your friends. Until next time, please. 
to get to each other.